What's going on, Millie Roaders? If this is your first time tuning into to the channel, welcome. If this is not your first time, welcome back. I am very excited to say that today I have a very special review because I am going to be reviewing the new 2020 992 Carrera S. And man, let me tell you, I'm super excited for it. I first want to give a, a shout out to the collection in Coral Gables, Florida. This would have been possible without them. If you guys need a Porsche or you know any of their other six brands that they have, just give them a call. The link for their website and their phone numbers will be down in the description below. But anyways, let's get to what you guys are here for, which is the new 2020 992 Carrera S. There it is guys, here is the 2020 992 Carrera S. Let me tell you this thing looks beautiful especially in this color and if you're wondering what the color is, it's called chalk. I think it looks great especially with all the black accents that this car has in particular. It makes the black accent stick out and the red caliper stick out even more. It's a beautiful color, my opinion, best color that Porsche has. Um, so anyways let's move to the front of the car which is probably the, one of the changes that you notice right off the bat. The front grille, they kind of just painted the whole thing black instead of like last year's model where they had in between the grills, they had a color match. I like this a lot better. It looks meaner in my opinion, kind of makes the car look wider, which that's another thing I'm gonna talk about in a few seconds. But before that, let's go, uh, let's keep on going around the car. So. If you keep on going around the car, you notice that the door handles are different as well. So door handles before, they used to be round, and I'm going to put a clip here where I compare the round uh, door handles that from last year's model to the door handles from this year's model, which are the ones that you see here. And you could tell that it looks a lot better in my opinion as well. Uh, I don't know why Porsche didn't come out with that design before. I, I have no idea what held them back, but I'm glad they did make the change this year. Wow, that's a, that's a loud car. But I'm glad they made the change this year. I think it does make it look a lot nicer and more flush with the car. And the best thing is that when you go to unlock the car, the door handles pop up and then you can just grab it and open the door I love it and then once you lock the car the door handles go back in. love that feature love how it looks goes very 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 well with the car next thing I want to talk about is the body of the car so in previous years they had two type of stylings, a wide body for the all-wheel drive version and kind of like a narrower, a narrower body for the rear-wheel drive version. This year for the 2020, they made all stylings wide body. So wide body, all the things. Um, but you might not be able to tell right off the bat if you see this car by itself, but if you have another car from the previous year next to it, you're gonna see how much wider this car is. nine nine one right here and of course the nine nine two right next to it and then you can really tell how much wider this car is than the previous generation by seeing them side to side my opinion of course <laughs> is that it looks a lot better I'm glad Porsche made these changes even though you know you, some people may not notice it it does make the car look a lot different all right, so now that I moved the car around, then we can move to the rear of the car. 
First thing you notice, um, as I'm sure, is the new rear design. And the first thing I noticed was definitely the LED strip that ties in the two tail lights together. I absolutely love that. It, it, you know, I, I'm pretty sure it is Panamera inspired because all the Panameras have it now. And sure, it came from there, but I absolutely love it. I also love the rear bumper, how it, it ties in to the front very well since they have one full black strip across the back of the car. Looks great in my opinion. The car just looks so menacing. All right guys, so before I show you how this car sounds, I wanna give you a little bit of horsepower numbers for these models. So, the 2020 992 Carrera comes with 379 horsepower and 331 foot-pound of torque. But since this is the Carrera S, they bumped up the horsepower a little bit, or a bit, to 443 horsepower and 390 foot-pounds of torque. Quite a big difference. Um, of course, the engine that they use is the twin-turbo 3-liter flat 6. And the only difference between the engines uh, for the Carrera and the Carrera S is nothing. Just kidding. They have two different turbos, right, set up. So the Carrera has what I'm assuming smaller turbos, and then the Carrera S has bigger turbos to be able to push more power to the wheels. Zero to 60 time comes in at 3.5 seconds, which is fairly quick for this car, but Porsche is known for kind of downselling how fast the cars are. There has been some, te some testing that's been done and some have hit zero to 60 in three seconds flat. The Carrera, not the S version, does zero to 60 in 4.0 seconds. But if you get the Chrono package, you'll be able to do it in 3.8. But of course, I'm sure those numbers are very conservative because that's what Porsche does. And yeah, but anyways, the quarter mile should be somewhere around the 11.3 second mark at 125. All right guys, so before I do the interior part of this car, I wanted to show you the exhaust system. So if you go inside the car, you can see here that it has exhaust system. So what that means is that once you click on it, the valves on the exhaust open up and you're able to make the car sound louder and more sporty. So I'm gonna see, maybe you guys could hear, maybe not. So um, I don't know if you guys could hear that, but the car definitely got louder as I, I touched the exhaust system. That means the valves opened up. And now I closed it. I'm gonna do it from the outside now too. So here's a little rep from the inside with the exhaust closed. And exhaust open. That's a big difference. I'm glad I just finished the out reviewing the outside of the car because it just started raining on me. And of course, that's Miami weather for you, but that's beside the point. Um, let's get into the interior features of this car that I think are very nice. And let's start off with the tack. So for this year, they did the tack. Um, they have two digital screens on the right and the left-hand side of the tack. Uh, they're controlled by this button or the scroll right here and you scroll through different options of course um you have navigation there which is great because instead of looking here you can look at it right here um and to control the left side of this display you have to click this button and now I'll go over here 
and you could go up and down through the different options which there's not many but hey at least you're able to go left and right <laughs> um the buttons feel great but before i do any of that and i start talking about that i want to switch to the right hand side you can see that when you switch back and forth it kind of highlights what side you're on um i want to show those different modes right so here's where you toggle it so i'm going to toggle to the right sport just completely changed the car um, the whole car is vibrating and you can see sport plus now has suspension as you go on it highlights it here and it highlights it in this screen too so let's go back to normal and everything comes out and the car stops shaking that's really aggressive and then sport there you go So of course it has the other options, individual, which you could adjust it, you know, put the different drive modes if you want, the exhaust system to be loud, sport, uh, the drive mode to be normal, sport plus, whatever. You're able to control that through the individual, but I'm just gonna leave it in normal for right now because that's what I'm choosing. All right guys, so the next thing I wanna talk about is center console right here. So big difference, huge difference is that the shift knob is a lot smaller right now than it was in the previous model. Before, it was a little bit taller, it was different color. Now, it just flows very well with the car and it's all black, which I actually absolutely love. I didn't know I was gonna like it so much. I spoke to a couple other people and they said I like the previous model better, but I actually like this better because it's not in the way of the other buttons that you have around here. So, the other buttons that are around here is the volume which is a little knob and here you have to go back and forth on the screen as well so these knobs they they feel sturdy um, I mean they're they move a little bit but you know whatever not a big deal and the buttons that I do really like the feel of are these right here they have kind of like a rough feel on the tips and they feel very sturdy like they don't even move which is great that's great build quality and of course here i know i'm jumping all over the place but here you can lower and higher the temperature and you could also have it sync from the left hand side and the right all right the next feature i really like or the next change that this car has is this right here the dash so this is very very panamera like Guess all the new Porsches are going this way and I have no complaints of it. I actually have the car off because it was a little loud and I had to open the door. But beside the point, I love how this dash looks. I think it flows a lot better with the car. It, for in my opinion, simplicity is key. And this is very simple, but it has just enough gadgets for you and just in the right places so that way you don't need a different looking dash. One thing that I forgot to mention is that when you put it on reverse, you have to hit the little knob up, and the camera is actually great. It's very high quality. You can see you entirely around the car, and you can change it panor panorama, which changes this view, the side, which changes this view, which is great so you don't have any curbs, or you can just go back to the regular, and there's your parking sensors. I think it's very nice. All right, guys, so other things I want to talk about is the storage space in this car. The glove compartment is pretty, it's pretty big, actually. You can see I can fit, you know, whatever, your book. Um, I can fit some of my camera equipment without a problem. Kind of spacious. I don't think you need more than this. Other storage compartments are on the doors, which, I feel like they're a little bit bigger. They have this kind of bigger uh, hole, so you can put like a bigger water bottle, which is smart of them. And of course, here where it's a little bit deeper, um, so that way you can store your wallet or smaller things. Over here on the passenger side, they have a cup holder, and there's also a cup holder here, which is not that big actually. I don't know what you can fit in here, but maybe like a water bottle or whatever. But that's, that's about it. 
So that's pretty much for storage, uh, for storage space in the front. Um, and I actually don't think it's that bad. This could be a weak car, but you can also daily it. I mean, I don't think in, in my personal car, I don't take that many things around. I like to keep my car clean, so I'm sure the owners of these cars would like to keep this car clean as well. All right, guys, so before I finish the review, I want to show you the front because I think that's very important. Uh, it has 4.6 square feet of storage, which is not as bad as it sounds, and I'll show you right now. So all you have to do to open the front is either from the inside or from the key itself. You can press the front button right here, and it pops open. So, in the front, I actually have my bag. And as you can see, it's pretty big. It's not, it's not too small. It definitely fits somebody in there. Just kidding, it fits half of somebody in there. But you could definitely fit, uh, fit your, your luggage in there, maybe a carry-on, maybe even a medium-sized uh, luggage. I don't think a large one will fit. But it's not that bad, as bad as it sounds. All right, guys, so before I leave, I want to go over the pricing real quick of this car. The base 992 starts at $97,400, and the Carrera S, or the 992 Carrera S, which I have here, starts at $113,400. Once again, if you want to get more information on this car and, you know, what cars are in stock, make sure to email or call the collection, contact their sales department. They'll help you guys out. They'll treat you like family. As, I, as they treated me like family for many years and just I want to say thank you again for letting me review this car and if you guys want to see more reviews like this make sure you give a like to this video subscribe and leave a comment on things that I missed on this car because I'm sure I missed a few things and of course comment to see what other cars I should review make sure you check out my previous videos as well I'm pointing up here because where I'm gonna link them and if you guys want to build a website in less than 10 minutes, I also have a video for that as well, which I'll link at the end of this video. Anyways, that's it for me, guys, and that's it for the 2020 992 Carrera S. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll catch you on the next one.